today we are going to study the new topic phase equilibrium part first in this chapter we have to study phase equilibrium in this phase equilibrium today we have to see the what is mean by phase rule with the statement then what is mean by phase what is mean by component what is mean by degree of freedom these are the different terms which are involved into the phase rule these terms and terminologies we are explaining with the help of ppts first and then after completion of powerpoint presentation i will explain each and everything in detail on the board so see careful towards the powerpoint presentation for that purpose i am now presenting the first slide here here we have to see the phase rule means what who had discovered it and what is it tells actually phase rule is a tool in the hands of scientist with with which scientist can study the different aspects related to the heterogeneous system means it is a tool in the hands of scientist to study the heterogeneous system in detail this phase rule is invented or discovered by the american physicist willard gibbs this rule is explained or put forth by the gibbs by the mathematical statement as f is equal to c minus p plus 2 this is the mathematical statement which is given by the willard gibbs this rule is free from flaws and limitations in this rule f is nothing but the degree of freedom c is the component and p is the phases now we are explaining each and every term in hold into the phase rule in the with the help of next ppt next ppt in which we have to see what is mean by phase phase is denoted by letter p phase is a homogeneous part which having all physical and chemical properties the same throughout means what phase is a homogeneous part where all the physical and chemical properties should be same throughout it means physically matter may be different one or chemically it may different whenever they are different we can't say it is a one phase for saying it is a single phase or one phase it should be having the same physical and chemical properties for example in water system there are three phases of water which are in equilibrium that are liquid water 
वाटर वेपर एंड आइस दीज आर द्री फेजेस ऑफ वाटर आर इन इक्विब्रियम लिक्विड वाटर वाटर वेपर एंड सॉलिड आइस दीज आर द्री फेजेस वाय दीज आर द्री फेजेस बिकॉज लिक्विड वाटर एंड वाटर वेपर आर फिजिकली डिफरंट इवन दो दैट फेजेस आर केमिकली वन एंड द सेम मीन्स फेज इज ए पार्ट ऑफ द सिस्टीम विच मस्ट हैव ए फिजिकल एज वेल एज केमिकल प्रॉपर्टीज शुड बी सेम सिस्टीम कंटेनिंग ओनली वन फेज इज कॉल्ड होमोजीनियस सिस्टीम A system containing two or more phases is called heterogeneous system. Then we have to see the what is mean by component with the help of next PPT. Component C. The term component may be defined as the least number of independent chemical constituents in terms of which the composition of every phase can be expressed by means of a chemical equation means whatever the different phases which we are taking under consideration for the study of phase rule the components which are taking part in that phases that should be taken under the consideration means during the study of phases or the system we must have to know the different components or the chemical constituents which may explain or define all the phases in the given system means components are nothing but the least number of independent chemical constituents which are present in the given system by which we can define all the phases that list number of independent chemical constituents is nothing but the component c water system has three phases as like ice water and water vapor even though water system has three phases its chemical constituent is only one that is the h2o h2o is a chemical entity with which all the three phases can be defined means even though in water system there are three phases only one phase come chemical entity that is h2o is representing its composition uh, and hence the component for water system is one hence water system is a one component system composition of all these three phases are explained by only one chemical entity that is h2 hence it is a one component system then we have to see the next term in hold into the phase rule that is the degree of freedom degree of freedom is denoted by f it is defined as the least number of variable factors as like concentration pressure and temperature which must be specified so that the remaining variables are fixed automatically and the system is completely defined degree of freedom is nothing but the least number of variable factors amongst of the concentration pressure and temperature which must be fixed for the complete explanation or the for complete defining the system that list number of variable factors that are nothing but the degree of freedom when f is equal to 0 the system is non variant when f is equal to 1 the system is univariant when f is equal to 2 the system is bivariant for <coughs> water system 
the three phases are ice water and water vapor these three phases are in equilibrium with the water in the water system in this case the degree of freedom is zero that we will study in detail how it is so in, with the help of board in detail so now i am going to explain each and every term in hold into the phase rule and the different terms present in the phase rule that i am explaining in detail with the help of board so please see towards the board now i am explaining with the help of board now i am explaining phase rule with board in this chapter phase equilibrium or the topic phase equilibrium we have to study the phase rule then the different terms in how in the phase rule phase rule is a tool in the hands of scientist with which a heterogeneous system can be studied this rule is given by the american physicist in 1874 and he had given the rule in the mathematical form f is equal to c minus p plus 2 where f is nothing but the degree of freedom c is the component and p is the phase or phases phase rule is mathematically given by willard gibbs mathematically as f is equal to c minus p plus 2 where f is the degree of freedom p is the number of phases and c is the component this rule is acting as a tool in the hands of scientist for study of heterogeneous system so we must have to know what is meant by heterogeneous system to understand the heterogeneous system first of all we must have to know the homogeneous system means what and what is mean by mean by system also we are using the word system then what is meaning by meaning of the system in this chapter in this chapter or in this topic the system word is used for the arrangement of matter which is under our study in this case we are studying the phase equilibrium also system is concerned with the phase equilibrium means we are considering the matter which are in contact with each other with the different phases for example we are studying one system as like when you are adding nacl to the water then what happens this nacl becomes soluble and forming a aqueous solution of nacl this is also a system for our study system is a part of universe which we are taking under the consideration of our study or we are taking for the study purpose that part of universe is called the system in this case we must have to know the heterogeneous system but for understanding the heterogeneous system first of all we must have to understand the homogeneous system in part take
milk for example 100 ml add to it 10 ml of H2O then what will happen water and milk will form a homogeneous part homogeneous part means what which is uniform throughout that uniform part of the system is called homogeneous part of the given heterogeneous system in this case it is a one system in which water and milk whenever shaken with each other and kept for standing for some time then what will happen it forms a uniform part that uniform part is called homogeneous part and this is the this is also acting here for the study purpose it is a system it is a homogeneous homogeneous part of system which having all physical and chemical properties same throughout that part of the system is called phase then heterogeneous system whenever we are taking kerosene or any oil and water mixed with each other or shaken vigorously with each other and kept for some time on stable ground after some time what happens they are forming the two separate layers one is oil layer and another is a water layer means in this case uniform nature of the given system is not present there are two separate phases oil phase and water phase they are not same physically and chemically throughout and hence such a system is called a heterogeneous system in which two separate layers are forming or two separate parts are present such a system is called heterogeneous system this is a homogeneous system in which a uniform part is formed another example consider a water system this water system is formed in this way take large beaker or glass vessel take some quantity of water in this way add to it large piece of ice then it will act as a one system this arrangement for the study purpose which we have set up here this arrangement is nothing but the water system this is one of the system in this water system ice is present here this is a water and above the ice and water some water vapors are also present means in the water system there are three phases water vapor ice and water these are the three separate phases why it is so because water vapors are in a gaseous state ice is in a solid state and water is in a liquid state means physically that three phases are different one these are the phases gaseous phase water vapor solid phase ice and liquid phase liquid water means it is acting as a heterogeneous system a separate three phases are present vapor phase ice phase and water phase it is acting as a heterogeneous system heterogeneous system is a dark system in which two or more than two phases are present 
That type of system is called heterogeneous system. Then the question is that what is mean by phase equilibrium? We have to see the regarding the phase equilibrium. In this case, in the vector system, how phase equilibrium is present that we have to see. In this case, water is present. Then here is the also here water is water is present. Here water is present. Here water is present. At this point, at this point, exactly we can't say that it is a water. Beyond that, here there is ice. Here there is ice. Here is also ice. But whenever we are approaching towards right side, and in case of the water, whenever we are approaching from the right to the left, then a particular line between the water phase and ice phase at which we can't say exactly it is water or it is a ice. A line of separating between them at which the both the phases are balanced with, with each other. That balancing is nothing but the equilibrium. And the two phases are showing the equilibrium between each other. Hence it is called as a phase equilibrium. Means in the heterogeneous system, whenever two or more than two phases are in contact with, with each other, then there is also a equilibrium between the uh, point at which they are contacting with each other. That equilibrium we have to see here in detail. Then we have to know some terms related to this chapter. Physical properties means what? Physical properties are nothing but the odor, smell, shape, size, and so on. Or the state of the matters, solid, liquid, gas, and so on. These are the physical properties. Chemical properties are the properties which are concerned with the chemical reactions or chemical compositions. So, up to this point, we have studied the what is mean by system. System is a part of the universe which we have taken under study. That part of the universe is called the system. In this chapter or in this topic, System, we have considered, considered here, which is concerned with the phases. This phase rule is more concerned with the study of heterogeneous system. Heterogeneous system is that system in which two or more than two phases are in equilibrium with, with each other. Means to study the heterogeneous system, a phase rule is acting as a tool to study it properly. So, we have studied up to this point, what is mean by homogeneous system, what is mean by heterogeneous system, then what is mean by system, then physical properties, chemical properties, and chemical uh, equilibrium between the phases. So, beyond that we have to see the phase rule. Phase rule is given by the American physicist Willard Gibbs in 1874. And the mathematical statement of the phase rule is F is equal to C minus P plus 2. Where F is the degree of freedom, C is the component, P are the phases and 2 is the constant. These are the different terms which are involved in, in it. So, it is very necessary for us, for the better understanding, to see one by one the terms which are involved into the phase rule. So, now I am starting the phase. What is mean by phase? Now, up to this point, we have studied properly what is in the heterogeneous system. This is a heterogeneous system, a water system. What is mean by phase? A homogeneous part of the system.
homogeneous part of a system which having all physical and the chemical properties same throughout means in water system this ice is a one phase in which physical and chemical properties are same physically at this point it is a ice solid structure at this point it is a solid structure at this point it is a solid means physically ice is one and the same chemically also it having the h2o h2o is the chemical constituent or the chemical composition of ice means this ice part is same throughout physically and chemically it is the necessary condition for the phase phase is a homogeneous part of a system which must possesses the physical as well as chemical composition same or the properties same this part of the water system where that is the ice this is acting as a one phase this water is a another phase this water is another phase why it is so because water is different physically it is different it is solid state it is liquid state physically it is different one chemically it is also con consist of the h2o ice and water are different one physically and hence these are the two separate phases so try to understand what is meant by phase <coughs> phase is a homogeneous part of the system which having physical and all physical and chemical properties same throughout it that part of a homogeneous system or that part that homogeneous part of the system is called phase alternatively or in, in case of the heterogeneous system phase is a homogeneous part which is a distinct one uniform one and physically and chemically same throughout it that part of the heterogeneous system is called phase phase is a homogeneous uniform and distinct part homogeneous uniform and a distinct part of a in a heterogeneous system which having all physical and chemical properties same throughout that part is called phase for example in the water system <laughs> in the upper part there are some water vapors this is ice and this is liquid water there are three phases Why there? These are three phases because vapor is a in a gaseous state, ice is in a solid state, and water is in a liquid state. Means they are physically different. But in case of the ice, at every point in between the ice, all physical and chemical properties are same throughout the ice that large this, and hence ice is acting as a single phase. then another water water is acting as a another phase why it is so because in the water all physical and chemical properties are same throughout in the water here physically it is liquid here it also physically it is liquid here it is also physically liquid here h2o chemically h2o here is also chemically h2o here is also chemically h2o means what in the water system in the water phase and on or in the part of the water all the physical and chemical properties are same and hence liquid water is acting as a another phase same is regarding in case of the gases also gases state that is the vapor 
Papers are also same throughout and which are physically and chemically same and hence the vapor state of water is acting as a third phase of the water system. Means up to this point you must have to take it under, under consideration phase is a, that part of the system which is homogeneous one, uniform one and it, is, it should be distinct one from the other phases. That part which having all physical and chemical properties same throughout that part of the system or the heterogeneous system is called a phase. For example, another example, mixture of gases. N2 and O2 is taken as a mixture. Then a mixture of nitrogen and oxygen is forming a homogeneous part. Hence it is a one phase system. When you are considering saturated solution of NaCl water so it is better to understand first of all what is in the saturated solution take for example 100 ml of the water add to it 2 gram of the NaCl stir it vigorously then what will happen that NaCl dissolve completely and disappear or it is scattering in the water Add another 2 grams, it is also dissolving. Add another 2 grams, it is also uh, dissolving. After some, some time, such a position is occurred at which, after addition of 2 grams, one of the gram is dissolving itself and distributing in the water, but 1 gram of the NaCl remaining at the bottom, and even after rigorous studying, it does not dissolve. That condition of solution is called saturated solution means in the saturated solution there are two phases one phase is a water in which initially is dissolved or distributed or scattered and another is a solid state solid initial particles are present at the bottom this is a solid state this is a liquid state. Means this part is a liquid state and this part is a solid state. Means physically they are different one. And hence it is a two phase system. So take under consideration phase is a homogeneous part, uniform one, and a distinct part in the heterogeneous system whose physical as well as chemical properties same throughout that part of the heterogeneous system is called the phase. In the water system, there are three phases, water vapor, ice and liquid water. Then we have to see the next term, component. We have seen up to this point, what is mean by phase. Then we have to see the component. Component is also another term which is present in the phase. Component. What is in the component? List number of chemical constituents with which we can express all the phases which are present in the given system by means of chemical equation. Means what? 
what are the different what are the different chemical constituents which are necessary to define or to express the all phases in the given system that chemical constituent that the number of chemical constituents which are required to explain or express the all phases that list number of chemical constituents in the form of chemical equation that is called the compound take the example example of water water system in this water system how many chemical constituents are required to express the all phases up to this point you got that point water system is a three phase system ice liquid and water vapor what are the chemical equations or the chemical constituents which are required to explain or express that phases chemically that we have to take under consideration water vapor is chemically h2o ice is also chemically h2o and water liquid water is also chemically h2o means then the only one chemical entity that is h2o which is sufficient to explain the or to express the all phases with the help of one chemical equation that is h2 and hence the water system is a one component system one component system another example Take an example of gases, mixture of gases, nitrogen and oxygen. Nitrogen and oxygen, whenever it mixes with each other, with each other, they are forming a homogeneous gas. But it having it required the two chemical constituents to express the composition of the system. Nitrogen and oxygen. these are the two separate components which are required to express the composition of the given system and hence the mixture of gases in this case components are two in the nacl when you are taking a saturated solution of nacl in this example we have to find out the number of chemical constituents which are which we are studying here water is chemically h2o and we are adding here or we have added here a nacl nacl is chemically in this way means the x molecules of nacl are dispersed scattered into the y molecules of the h2o means there are two chemical constituents as like the nacl and h2o is required to express this system means the total number of chemical constituents which are present in this saturated solution of the nacl that are two and hence the chemical constituent as the chemical constituents or chemical components of the saturated solution of nacl is two means component is a list number of chemical constituents or chemical entities with which all phases or all composition of all phases is explained with the help of chemical equation that list number of chemical equations or or constituents or chemical entities are called the component then we have to see the next term which is involved into the phase rule that is degree of freedom f degree of freedom f degree of freedom f is another term which is involved 
into the phase zero equation. F is equal to C minus P plus two is phase zero. In which we have seen the two terms. What is mean by phase? What is mean by component? Now we have to see the what is mean by degree of freedom. Degree of freedom means what? The least number of variable factors which are necessary to specify then or so that the other variable factors are automatically fixed on and we can define or we can study or we can explain whole the system completely that least number of variable factors is nothing but the degree of freedom f in the water system there are three variable factors temperature pressure and concentration or composition these are the three variable factors which are affecting the heterogeneity amongst of these variable factors How many variable variable factors which we have to specify for the study of heterogeneous system? Then the remaining variables automatically fixed. That least number of variable factors is nothing but the degree of freedom f. For example, in the water, water system is normally present. At zero degree Celsius, being the availability of water, means temperature is fixed one. Then chemical composition H two O is also fixed one. Then the third composition automatically fixed. Means in this case there is no necessity to fix or specify. Any variable, hence the degree of freedom f is zero for water, and hence water system is a zero variant or non-variant. For the pure gases, as like only hydro or oxygen, only two variables are required to specify. After fixing the temperature and pressure, or at a Defined or at a given temperature and pressure, the third variable volume is automatically fixed. Means two variables are required to fix for the pure gases, and hence the degree of freedom is two for the pure gases. But whenever we are considering the mixture of gases, for example, mixture of nitrogen and oxygen, then whenever we are fixing the temperature and pressure. Then the next question is remained about the concentration or the volume. What much concentration of nitrogen and what much concentration of oxygen present in the given system? And for that purpose, the third variable, that is the concentration, is also playing important role in such case. And hence the degree of freedom is three for the mixture of gases. In the in case of saturated solution. Of initial temperature is required to fix, then the other variables will be automatically fixed, and hence the degree of freedom for the saturated solution of sodium chloride is one. These are regarding the phase rule. Different terms involved in it. As like phases, components, and the degree of freedom. Once again, try to remind. Or I am concluding here. Phase rule is a tool in the hands of scientists for study heterogeneous system. This tool is given by the American physicist Willard Gibbs in 1874. He had given the The rule in the mathematical form f is equal to c minus p plus two. F is the degree of freedom, c is the component, and p is the phase. Then 
the terms involved in it. Phase is a homogeneous, uniform and distinct part which having all physical and chemical properties same throughout that part of a heterogeneous system is called phase, phases or phase. Components are the list number of chemical entities which are required to study the chemical composition of all phases. Then the degree of freedom is the list number of variables as there is the temperature, pressure and concentration. That list number of variables which must be specified for the, uh, for the given system and at another variables automatically fix them and then we can define or we can study that system completely. That is the list number of variable factors is nothing but the degree of freedom. Degree of freedom, yes, can be calculated with the help of phase rule in this way. F is equal to C minus P plus 2. Take the example, example of water system. In the water, there are three pages, vapor, water, and ice means come and every phase having a one chemical entity that is H2O hence the chemical component is one H2O 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 ice having H2O water having H2O and vapors also having H2O means the one chemical entity is sufficient to express chemical composition of the all phases which are present in the given heterogeneous system that is the water system and hence the com <coughs> component is one phases are three one two three plus two is equal to plus one plus two plus three minus three is equal to zero means the degree of freedom for a water system can be calculated with the help of mathematical equation of the phase rule that is F is equal to C minus P plus 2 in this way.